All right, this video is to go over definite integrals that involve u substitution. So um, I first want to review one that does not involve u substitution. So let's look at the integral um, from zero to pi of three sine x dx. So to do that problem, we come up with an antiderivative of three sine x, and the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we get negative three cosine x evaluated from zero to pi. That means you then plug in pi for x and plug in zero for x and subtract. And so we get negative three cosine of pi minus negative three cosine of zero. Uh, cosine of pi is negative one. And then minus negative three is obviously plus three. And cosine of zero is positive one. So here we get three plus three, which is six. So just a quick review of how uh, definite integrals work. Um, what I want to look at is definite integrals with u substitution. And I want to look at two different methods um, in order to show the work so that it's mathematically correct. So for the next problem, I want to look at the integral of x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1 dx evaluated from 0 to 4. And so there are two good ways to go about this. Um, when we do the problem up here, kind of the idea is that you go from this function and in the brackets, you put any antiderivative. And that's exactly what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. It says that as long as the function inside the integral is continuous, on the interval that you're talking about, so like from 0 to pi or in the next problem from 0 to 4, if you can find any antiderivative, then you can evaluate it at the top bound, evaluate it at the bottom bound, and subtract the two answers. So one way to go about this is to treat that find the antiderivative as like a sidestep. So rather than working directly with this problem, start over here by doing the antiderivative. So do it without the bound. And that is covering the step that I've written or I've indicated in red on the top of the screen. So when you find the antiderivative of three sine x, we can do that without much work at all. Um, when we're doing the antiderivative of x square root of three x squared plus one, we're going to do the antiderivative using u substitution. So rather than working directly with the definite integral, we can come over here and say, okay, u is going to equal 3x squared plus 1. du is going to be 6x dx. We can rewrite the problem as x times 3x squared plus 1 to the 1 half dx. We need a 6x at the end, so we move the x to the end of the problem. We put the 6 in and the 1 sixth outside, and we get 1 sixth integral u to the 1 half du. That's then 1 sixth times 1 over 3 halves u to the 3 halves plus c. That's then 1 6 times 2 thirds times 3x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. And then 1 half times, or I'm sorry, 1 6 times 2 thirds. The 2 and the 6 cancel and we get 1 ninth times 3x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so all of that work is kind of doing the step in red that we're doing up there. So we're just taking the antiderivative and we're getting an answer. Then what the fundamental theorem of calculus says is that this definite integral, because it's continuous, the, the integrand is continuous from 0 to 4, the definite integral is equal to any antiderivative. So I can do 1 ninth times 3x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves and then I can choose any C. So if I want C to be seven, I can put plus seven. 
normally what we do is choose C as zero. So I, I put plus zero, which means I don't have to put anything. And then I evaluate this function from zero to four. Now we plug in four for all of the X's. So we get one ninth times three times four squared plus one to the three halves minus one ninth times three times zero squared plus one to the three halves. Three times four squared is three times 16, so that's 48 plus one is 49. And now minus one ninth times three times zero squared is zero plus one is zero. So I'm sorry, plus one is one to the three halves. We then get one ninth times the square root of 49 to the third, so times seven to the third, minus one ninth times one. Seven to the third is 343. That gets us 342 over nine, which is 38. Okay, so to do the definite integral, you can just do the antiderivative on the side and then say, okay, the, because of all that work on the side, we can jump from here to here. The antiderivative of x times square root of 3x squared plus 1, or one antiderivative of that, is 1 ninth times 3x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves, and now we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 4. That's a perfectly legitimate way to do the problem. In most situations in Calc 2, this is actually what I would recommend. Um, there's another method we're going to look at, and it's very important to understand that method. Um, you, you certainly can use it, and it's important that you understand it uh, for things we're going to do later in this course, and then also if you take multivariable calculus, which is normally Calc 3. Okay, so we're actually going to do the same problem, but we're going to show the work in a different way. And so the, what we're going to show here is how you do u-substitution within the definite integral. So you do these things simultaneously rather than kind of compartmentalizing it. So like up here, what we did is we went over to the right, we did the antiderivative as basically a separate problem. Whoops. And then we said, uh, okay, then you take the antiderivative and evaluate from 0 to 4. Here we're going to simultaneously substitute uh, u and du, and then we're going to uh, deal with the bounds the entire time. So we start this like we would normally start a u substitution problem, where u is 3x squared plus 1, and du is 6dx. And so we go about it the same way that we normally do. So we go ahead and replace the 3x squared plus 1 under the square root, with 3x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And now we need, whoops, that should be 6x dx. And so now we need 6x at the end, so we move the x to the end. We multiply inside by 6. So the x came from within the problem. I put the 6 in there. So because I multiplied inside by 6, I have to multiply outside by 1 6. And now I'm going to write something that's wrong, and I want you to figure out what's wrong with what I'm writing next. So think about what these symbols mean. And pause the video, and I want you to look closely at what's going on and see if you can determine what's wrong with that step before we move on. Okay, so the problem with that step is that when you have dx here, then that indicates that these are x values. Okay, so because it's dx, then those are x values. So this is dx, this is dx. That means 0 and 4 are x values. The issue here is that we're talking now about du, which would indicate these are u values. That's wrong because when x is 0 and when x is 4, u is not 0 and u is not 4. So when we look at the problem, what we do is we go to this step, and instead of 0 to 4, we're going to put 1 
to 49. And now again, before I explain that, I want you to pause the video and see if you can determine how I came up with the bound 1 and 49. Okay, so the reason that we did that is because when x is 4, for instance, u is 3 times 4 squared plus 1 because u is 3x squared plus 1. Well, that's 49. When x is 0, u is 1. And so those are the u values that correspond to the 0 and 4. Okay, so to complete the problem, now we complete it as though x were never in the problem. So we do our 1 6 times 1 over 3 halves, u to the 3 halves, evaluated from 1 to 49. We do the simplification we would normally do, so 1 6 times 2 thirds, u to the 3 halves, from 1 to 49. That's then 1 ninth u to the 3 halves from 1 to 49. Now what's weird on this is that we do not go back to x. So because 1 and 49 are u values, we plug those directly into this formula. So we get 1 ninth times 49 to the 3 halves minus 1 ninth. Oops, let's make that a little bit neater. So 1 ninth times 49 to the 3 halves minus 1 ninth times 1 to the 3 halves. We then figure out, okay, well that's 1 ninth times 7 to the 3rd minus 1 ninth times 1. That's 343 over 9 minus 1 over 9. That's 342 over 9, which is then 38. Okay, so this method is completely fine. Um, you are welcome to use this method, but you have to be careful. It's, it's more efficient than doing what we're doing up above here, but it's sometimes trickier. It's sometimes harder to, or easier to mess up. Um, a lot of times what people will want to do is they'll want to go back to X at this end part. So like when we're talking about this stuff, uh, you got to remember not to go back to X because these are U values. And so same, the 1 and the 49, those are u values, so you don't go back to x. So this is a legitimate way to do it. It's important to understand this way to do the problem because it's important to keep track of what the differentials mean, what the du and the dx mean. So on a definite integral, the dx is indicating that those bounds are x values. On a, um, when it's du, it's indicating the bounds are du, or, I'm sorry, the bounds are u values. Um, it's also important in Calculus 3. You'll be changing variables a good bit, and sometimes there's not a, a way around this when we talk about multiple multivariable calculus. So you do need to practice some of these with definite integrals. You are welcome to use either, either method, but we have to be careful about notation. So if you're doing this method up here, remember that you, these are two completely separate problems. So in no way is the integral on the left equal to the integral on the right but we're using the integral on the right in order to solve the integral on the left. And then down here, you have to be real, real careful with the notation. Anytime you're using dx, the bounds on the integral should be x values. Anytime you're using du, the bounds on the integral should be u values. When you do this substitution at the end, if you uh, have an answer or you will have an answer in terms of u, you do not go back to x. You continue using the u variable and plug in the values that you've got for you. Okay, nothing really new about the calculus part of this, just a way to show the notation. Um, important to show correct notation, uh, but this is something you should for sure practice. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.